Ki E Da Mixkanatani. Good morning. Just pulling away from the house. It's almost 8 30 in the AM. Gotta head to Samus. Get to work. This is the last day of work till uh, the new year, which I'm really glad for. I can use a break. All kinds of stuff happening. Um, well, some stuff happening that I need to update today on. So I figured I'd make a little update video and uh, share what's the big news. Um, I guess since the previous week is that we've been in a hugely deep freeze. Well, that's not even the big news. It's a, it's a bunch of big news. But um, we've been in this in this uh, temperature change. We had a polar vortex. <laughs> Come along. It, they reminded me of like uh, like uh, uh, the day after tomorrow thing or whatever, where that where some polar vortex sweeps over and then it just like freezes the life out of everything below it. Because it has been cold. We're talking like negative thirty some days. Right now it's minus minus nineteen, and we're coming out of it. Um, and it's been this way for a while. Uh, last Sunday, for instance, I normally do my walk-in talks. On Saturday, I had gone out, or I think maybe even maybe even last Thursday or Friday. I don't know. But remember, uh, my last video, I went out and uh, gathered my camera traps. Then I tried to go out for my walk-in talk on Sunday, and. Um, when I put on my boots, I found that my my uh, insoles, um, the padding in there was was damp already from the day before, and um, and it was minus 22 outside. So walking out there with damp shoes when I got blowout heels and stuff like that is just not smart. Um, Carol, for her part, the, the student that normally comes with me on my walking talk, just knew, and she was like, "Oh, I'm I'm cleaning the snow off my driveway right now." It was earlier in the morning. There's a little bit of wind, and she's like, "I don't I don't think I don't think I'm going for the walk this morning. Too cold. Um, too cold, and the and the weather conditions too treacherous with the snow and stuff on the ground, icy roads, and uh, so she backed out. But I still went." with my damp boots because I wanted to check uh, just at least by the rapids um, to look for the snow goose and the swan. And I've got that video footage. I'll show you that right here. Are there any swan or snow gooses out there? I am not seeing any with my naked eye. Of course, it could be on my side of the cut bank somewhere. There's a couple of golden eyes. They are normal here for the winter. And I haven't seen any of them affected yet by this flu pandemic. Yeah, I can see a coyotes. 
Oh no, that might be a goose foot. It's this group. I think that one that was underneath my trap yesterday is here and may be deceased at this point. Who else we got? Oh, oh. Who's trying to sneak away here? These the scalps. Golden eye over here. Oh, my hand is freezing. This is this a swan out here? Where did I see that? Here. No, that's just ice, eh? I don't know, I can't I can't tell. Looks like it might no that's a swan. Hey? Alright, there's, there's, there's her. Confirmed, still here. Way past swan days. Not supposed to be here. Alright, my hand is frozen. Camera's probably cold too. I'm gonna shut off and walk on. Yeah, it sucks having the temperatures this low. You know, for the f a few days before the temperatures really dropped, I finally got some motivation and I started getting out every morning, making it like a point because I, I drop Brit off at work a lot of times at 6 a.m. at Old Navy. She does, she does all the morning stuff, getting the store prepared and all of that. And then, uh, and then open shop for a few hours before she goes home. But, um, since I'm up that early anyway, I thought maybe I should be taking advantage of this and trying to get my my uh, body back into some shape. So I started making an effort to, to do like five kilometers of something a day, whether it's running or, or walking. Really, I've just been, when I'm running even, I've just been kind of shuffling um, and not just running full out. I've been running, walking, running, walking. Not because of the uh, anything with my cardio, but just because I don't want to stress that one calf muscle too much. Put it beyond what it's what it's able to do. I need to build it back up in its attachments and stuff, strengthen it somehow. Um, I also started doing a little bit of of, bull, of uh, bully proofing, Gracie bully proofing with Jalisa in the training room, doing some a little bit of martial arts play in practice. So I'm hoping that I can get either her or one of the nephews or somebody interested in, in practicing that a little bit with me. Um, the room's really small. I don't know if I'll get normal sized training partners in there quite yet, but, but uh, yeah, I wanna start getting back in shape. And it's really hard to, to deal with that in this cold weather and I don't like I don't like the uh, like machines, like treadmills or that kind of thing, going to gyms. To me, that's just a big waste of money when you got a whole open world to practice in, you know? Um, like if you want to walk or run, there's a million places. Like you just have to get stand up and do it, really. <laughs> you don't even have to go anywhere. You can do it in your home. If you need stairs, a lot of our houses here have stairs, you know? Um, so yeah, I won't, I won't be doing that machine stuff. I got, I'm just going to wait out the temperatures and get back to it. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I got a rattlesnake. <laughs> Believe it or not, on a day that was colder than 30 below, I got a rattlesnake call. Um, it was from the University of Lethbridge. Of course, that's the only place that I would likely get a call this season. Although, I don't know. You know, you, there's weird shit that happens. I had 
um, a couple years back, some of you remember, I had a, a bearded dragon that I picked up in the middle of a, of a freak uh, Arctic or polar vortex or whatever. <laughs> in the cold, it was outside and handed over to me by Lethbridge Police. Showed up on somebody's doorstep and it was it was so cold in time. get a, a reptile uh, pickup in the middle of winter like this is quite unusual. However, um, the University of Lethbridge has some walls that I think are adjacent to rattlesnake dens, um, walls of their mechanical room. And so we get a few snakes in the, in the campus inside the mechanical rooms and the computer rooms next to the mechanical rooms every year. Um, and that was the case with this one, I'll show you. Do you want to go let Ryan in? Hey. What you looking for, for the beauty? What's that? Looking for that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. This guy. Oh, just a little guy. Yeah. <laughs> just a little wee one. Um, do you guys want to keep your bucket here? Yeah, you need the bucket. Yeah, my transfer bucket is all, you know, it's been in the back of my truck, so it's freezing, freezing cold. I didn't want to dump a snake in there, so I didn't bring my bucket in with me. They need their bucket in case they get another snake. So, I've got a uh, face mask <laughs> box, a little flimsy, and the little guy's in there. And uh, it's definitely escapable. So, this is a temporary fix. Just gotta make sure he doesn't get out of there between uh, here and the office. All right, so get ready for just a little shot of cold. Winter Wonderland. So, of course, I've taken this guy home at the end of the day. Had to get a special permit from Fish and Wildlife to do this, by the way. Uh, Alberta Fish and Wildlife has allowed me to temporarily take care of this snake. And we're not going to release her until it's least 10, 15 degrees outside. So she might be here even a couple of months, we'll see. If so, we'll end up feeding her. But um, I don't even know if it's a him or a her actually. So young, it's, it's really hard to tell. Um, right now I just got water, a little shelter, nice, you know, enclosure for her. And uh, 
she should do okay here for a little bit, but if she has to stay too long, then without that brumation that she normally get in the winter, she's going to lose a lot of energy. She's going to need to be fed. Okay. So we may get to that point, in which case we'll have to feed her and we'll have to allow the, uh, the food to pass all the way through her before we can release again. In any case, this is her temporary home and we'll be checking in on her and uh, she needs a name. I haven't given her a name yet. She or he, we could, we could go with either or a gender neutral name at this point. <laughs> um, it is snake feeding night for me. So I'm going to uh, show you a little bit of that. I've got a couple of medium size rats here that I'm going to be feeding to my exotic snakes. And then I'm going to show you a snake that's in care with me. And that snake is going to be getting tube fed tonight. Um, here's one of my exotics. Her, uh, She's been shedding, obviously. This is pineapple. She's a bumblebee, bumblebee morph uh, rock python or ball python from Africa originally. But her genetics have been messed with so much that... Um, She's got this weird uh, this disability where she doesn't discern. Um, she doesn't have good, what would you call it, depth and uh, perception and perce perception of uh, just space in general, up, down, and all of this stuff. She, it's really difficult to get her to, uh, like she can't, it's, it, she can't like strike out and hit a target. She has to find it already dead and kind of just mouth it and eat it, you know. Well, she'll she'll pretend, not really pretend, she's really doing it, but she's going to constrict it. Um, but in actuality, um, see, she's getting excited now because I opened her door. She's like, oh, what's going on now? What's going on now, huh, Pineapple? Let's get a rat. Let's get a rat. Doing this one-handed. <laughs> Without the aid of my knife. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to uh, set this camera down somehow. both right now. Am I upside down? <laughs> I bet I'm upside down. Let's see. Oh no, that's good. Okay. So, let's give her a rat. Oh, wait a minute. I got some tongs here somewhere. Where are my tongs? My tongs. I have misplaced my tongs. Okay, I guess we're not using tongs today for this operation. Normally I would place the rat in there via tong. This one is going to be by hand. Okay, I'll just leave it there. She'll come find it in a second. Let's get Mr. Gomez going too. I still got to build him a, a lid. I mean, this is kind of flimsy, ridiculous. He'll probably pop his way out of here if he really. Give it a try. All right. What a beauty. Mmm, yummy yum. <laughs> Gomez. My boy. Big boy. He's back there. He'll come out. He'll come out. 
it's better that he's back there than all alert already because um, he might he might strike me. He's kind of that way when he's hungry. All right, we'll put this guy in here. Just like that, he'll come find it. And then uh, probably see some of that. Meanwhile, let's get out my patient number two here. Now, this was a snake that I picked up end of the season in uh, north side of Lethbridge, a bull snake. And this snake has uh, been bashed in the head, I believe by the guy whose house I picked him up from. Okay. And he's quite skinny. Quite skinny. Oh, she's, she's hitting it. She's looking for it. It's right there, pineapple. Yeah, eat her up, baby. throwing her off here because I'm a heat source. In any case, this guy has gotten quite skinny and uh, I've been feeding him, but I have to tube feed him because uh, he's unable to eat any other way. So we're going to do a little tube feeding in a moment here. Um, what I'm using is Whiskas, perfect portions, chicken entree pate. It's high protein. Um, you could use baby food, like human baby food too. But good luck finding Gerber baby food these days that's high protein. Most of it seems to be vegetable base. Um, so I just mix it up and then I'm gonna put it into, where's my, uh, Go. Oh, shoot. Down here. That's not quite sterile, but it is what it is. All right, so we're going to load that up and get to you. Hopefully, you can see me there. Going to load this up. You got to just, it's mostly hydration and a little bit of food that he's going to get but he doesn't he's unable to drink water it seems as well and uh it's just a mess i don't know if he's going to survive you know like he's definitely not capable of being successful back in the coolies at this point we'll see if he gets there so I load this up, this hypodermic up. I'm gonna put my little tubing on there and then run it to the end of the tube so it's ready to rock and roll. Yeah, so now it's just gonna be straight fluid going down into him. I'm gonna grab him and I'll do it right here in front of the camera. Come here, buddy. See, uh, this one's kind of discombobulated too. Normally a snake wouldn't loop up like that. And uh, he kind of doesn't have his sense of direction like a normal snake would, hey, if he wasn't injured. He's injured, but he might recover with a little bit of time and stuff. He's just gonna need a, a lot of aid. So we're gonna feed him here have to introduce the tube into the mouth. It's a lot of little teeth in the mouth, so they're gonna catch on the tube sometimes. I just put it down the throat little ways like this and start the injection. Okay. 
and then remove the tube. So like I say, he's got lots of little teeth, so try not to rip the teeth out as you take the tube out. Okay, because they're gonna stick to the tube if you were to be tube feeding him. But there, now he's hydrated and he's got a little bit of protein in him. And hopefully I can get him off of this because he, he was, I was just waiting to see what happened with him and he got uh, skinny over a couple of months. So he's starving basically uh, in my care. And so he's gotta be tube fed at this point, right? Don't want the snake to die. And right now he's way too skinny, way too skinny. So, all right, I'm gonna put him back. You can come with me now, I suppose. <laughs> this one doesn't have a name either as yet, even though he's been here since end of summer. Actually, he's the bigger snake. He should be in here. <laughs> this little guy should be next door, but that's all right. He's all cool. Okay, so that is my update. There's probably some other stuff I wanted to say, but I'll save that for later. Or who knows? Maybe things will change and I don't need that the update anymore. <laughs> now you're curious. Anyway, I'm going to go. Um, oh, let's see. Did she find it yet? She did not. Did Gomez find his? I don't think he's even awake. This rat's still in there. Sorry. No show on the, on the feeding. It's probably going to take her a little while and I'm not going to stand around with the camera much more. This video is probably a half hour long. All right. See you all again. Oh, wait. One more thing. Remember my pond sludge aqua thingy <laughs> with Brit's fish, her fighting fish? Um, I haven't taken anything out. All I've done is add water ever and organisms and when they die they go to the bottom and it's it's pretty sludgy and gross but uh one of the things that i noticed the other day was look on the wall here and see if i can show you um do you see that that thing there it's clearly i think some kind of egg pack it against the glass it's one two three there's there's a few of them hey one two three there's some over on that wall it looks like eggs and i'm betting it's snail eggs we do have a couple of wild snails in here and if so that'd be nice we get a whole bunch of snails crop it up in here and uh clean this thing up so I'll keep you posted on that. I think I also need some plants, but I gotta wait for summer, summer, summer time to come back around. <laughs>